I'm Leo Walder for Kit Guru, and this laptop here is the Razer Blade, which is just about to run Ashes of the Singularity Benchmark. It's at uh, full HD, 1920 by 1080, and it's running on the high preset. So as that gets to kick off, uh, you may think to yourself, but goodness gracious me, didn't Leo just recently review the Razer Blade laptop? And you'd be quite correct. This is very slightly different to the previous Razer Blade, in it has a Core i7-7700HQ Kaby Lake processor rather than the 6700HQ Skylake processor. Other than that, it's the same laptop. Uh, so it's got a 14-inch IPS panel, as I say, full HD. It runs on a Samsung SSD. Uh, it makes a certain amount of noise, as you may hear there, when it's uh, howling away. Uh, actually, I'm not quite correct. The processor is different, which means it's uh, 300 megahertz faster when it's using a full uh, turbo boost. But uh, also the memory is very slightly faster. It is now DDR4 2400 rather than 2133. I think we can agree that's a trivial difference. So slightly faster processor, uh, uh, one generation newer, which as we know is only a very slight revision and uh, very slightly faster DDR4. Now, were I to hang a review on that, we'd all be bored witless and that wouldn't do us much good, would it? So instead, we're going to look at the graphics. Uh, the processor, slightly newer, slightly better, great. Uh, if you're buying um, a razor blade, then having the KB Lake rather than the Sky Lake, sure, why not? Uh, as you'll see from the test results over on KitGuru, it makes next to no difference. The differences are trivial, so uh, in the great scheme of things, not a problem. In fact, I'll, I'll go as far as to say, if I could find a Skylake razor blade uh, for sale at a discount, I'd be strongly tempted to buy the thing because the difference in performance is so trivial. If you can save some cash, hurrah. Anyway, uh, this is now running uh, Ashes of the Singularity, as I say, at uh, full HD, so 2K. Uh, and we want to see how the uh, GTX 1060 graphics in the laptop uh, deliver results. And the result is an average of 60.5 FPS for all batches, 61 in uh, round figures, uh, which obviously is a perfectly playable result on this laptop at full HD using the uh, GTX 1060 graphics. In addition to the Razer Blade laptop, Razer also sent us its core external graphics unit. This is basically the aluminium housing for the core. This is the caddy that goes inside. Uh, it's a relatively straightforward piece of hardware, albeit it's got some clever electronics and clever software. So you hoik out the innards, uh, plug in your GTX 1080 in this instance, which is a, a reference design. So that's a £500 core unit and a £500 graphics card. So this is £1,000 worth of stuff. Plug in the power cable that's all part and parcel of the innards. Take the unit, slide the innards back inside. Like so. Lock the handle. Job done. On the back, we have a bunch of USB ports and Ethernet ports, so it sort of acts like a dock as well as a, a graphics base. You've also got all the outputs from the graphics card, and you have a Thunderbolt 3 port, and you get this uh, Thunderbolt 3 cable with the uh, package, which plugs into the laptop there, plugs in the back of the core unit thus, loads the data back and forth, laptop can communicate with the GTX 1080, uh, and you can either then send the data back to the laptop to power the screen, or you can use an external display. Absolutely superb in concept. The thing is, the core is not intended to work with Blade. Core is intended to work with the Razer Blade Stealth, which is a, a very low power CPU, very uh, integrated Intel graphics laptop, much thinner than this, amazingly thinner than this. Uh, so, <laughs> Razer's come up with some beta software that allows you to uh, force this unit to take over from the GTX 1060. Uh, it's called GPU Switcher, and it worked like a dream. I mean, the instructions ran to pages and pages, and it really was dead straightforward. Install software, look at what's gone on, confirm that Thunderbolt 3 is working correctly, uh, then decide which graphics card you want to use. Do you want to use your 1060, your 1080, or have the choice? We'll have the 1080, thanks. Job done. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, so same test as before. Ash is the singularity running at 2K using the uh, laptop screen, uh, but this time the graphics are powered by the core unit with a GTX 1080 graphics card rather than the GTX 1060 chip that's inside the laptop. That's surely got to give us loads more performance, right? GTX 1080 is much, much better than GTX 1060. And the answer is no, not exactly. The frame rate does indeed rise, but it rises from 61 frames a second to 65 frames a second. And when you consider the huge amount of extra horsepower we've got in the graphics department, that's, that's a trivial difference. 
The thing about that previous setup, of course, is that the uh, Thunderbolt 3 cable is doing two-way communication between the laptop and the core unit, output from the laptop to the core and then back to the laptop to display on the screen. Much more sensible to use the DisplayPort output from the graphics card, the GTX 1080, in the core unit to output to a different display. So now we have the uh, laptop gone dark because we've turned off the screen, so the laptop is communicating with the core and then the core outputs to this panel here, which is a 4K display but it's set to 2K. So the settings are precisely the same as before. wonder how that works. Connecting the external display gives us 72 frames a second, purely because the data is not having to go back and forth up and down the Thunderbolt cable, but instead comes from the laptop to the core unit and then out via DisplayPort to the monitor. Bingo! It has to be said, this is an amazingly involved way of going about playing games at 1080p, so common sense says we bump up the resolution. 2560 by 1440 is the next step up from 1080. Let's see how that behaves. And there we have it, 60 frames a second. So we're running Ashes of the Singularity at 2560 by 1440 on an external display powered by this core graphics unit, and we basically ended up with the same frame rate that we originally had using the internal GTX 1060 graphics on the laptop display. Those test results from uh, Ashes at 1440p were fairly conclusive, but just to uh, finish this off, we're running at 4K just to see what happens, although it's fairly clear that 1440p at high is about the limit of our aspirations. 4K, or indeed uh, bumping up uh, IQ to say crazy, uh, is gonna be a fairly tough ask of this particular setup. So it, uh, it delivers results, but to a certain extent. We started this video with a question, uh, in our mind's eye at any rate, which was, do we recommend Core uh, with GTX 1080 as an add-on for your uh, Razorblade laptop if you wanna play games? Uh, that wasn't really a fair question because, of course, Core is not intended to, to go with Blade. Uh, hence, you have the beta GPU software to uh, force it to work correctly. In fairness, that software works absolutely perfectly. Nonetheless, that was the question we were asking ourselves. And that question rapidly went off the rails because the results we got just didn't uh, match up with our expectations. They didn't match what we expected from a GTX 1080, and that is because the CPU quite clearly was the bottleneck in performance, uh, which took us sort of back to previous reviews we'd done with bigger laptops with more beefy processors, uh, sometimes with dual GTX 1080s. And in those instances, it was clear there's an internal bottleneck somewhere, whether it was one of the buses or the processor itself. Uh, this this kind of proved the point. Uh, so would we recommend a core with GTX 1080 to make your uh, razor blade play faster games? No, not really, particularly not at this price. Uh, it works absolutely perfectly, but no. However, that isn't really the question. Uh, why has Razer chosen a GTX 1060 to go with the processor in this laptop? And the answer is because it's a perfect match. That laptop with that 14 inch screen, with a 2K full HD panel, uh, with that combination of Cable 8 mobile processor, GTX 1060, absolutely superb, works fabulously. Marginal improvement over the Skylake version, but brilliant, love it to bits. Total result. In terms of external graphics to go on a laptop, Honestly, not convinced. The, the premise of you get home, you plug your laptop into this unit, you play your games near TV, yeah, you can. I cannot see the point in truth. If you want to cast the output from your laptop to your TV, so be it. There are many ways of doing that. Uh, if you want to play games on a TV, it strikes me the smart move is to simply have a dedicated PC sat by your TV. Uh, you're paying a lot of money for the very uh, smart housing uh, that you uh, get with the core and the external ports and such like. Uh, if you have a small form factor tower, micro ATX, mini ITX next to your TV, it's going to cost you more than this unit, obviously, but not a massive amount more, and the performance will be better than the combination of this laptop and this unit plugged into your TV. It will just work. You better play 4K games, certainly 1440p games, uh, but probably 4K games without any difficulty, and overall you will get better results. So, Razer Blade, darn fine laptop, does play games, don't mess with it, use it as it comes. Core, connected to Razer Blade, blooming interesting, work very nicely, that GPU switcher software works absolutely fabulously, Razer Synapse uh, handles the core beautifully, however, it's, it's a red herring. It took us down a blind alley and other cliches and so on and so forth. Uh, we enjoyed the experience, but no, do not use uh, this core unit with that razor blade to play games at high resolution. Uh, it'll cost you a lot of money and the results are marginal in the extreme. The new Kaby Lake razor blade is a marginal improvement over the Skylake 
uh, razor blade, but it is an absolutely excellent laptop. Love it to bits. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from Kick Guru, please do click to subscribe. I'm Leo Wood of Kick Guru. That's Razorblade. This is Razor Core.